So continuing on with uh, rebuilding this car, this is a 2005 BMW 545i, has the N62 engine, um, the ZF transmission, uh, like a lot of you guys out there, got to do the valve stem seals, it was burning some blue smoke coming out the exhaust, so had some oil leak by, and actually when I was, uh, when I was cleaning out the secondary air system, you could see the seals were worn, and some oil coming down into the exhaust manifold, so decided to go ahead and do it. The stem seals themselves were actually pretty reasonable. All 32 of them, you can get them for, you know, I saw them out there anywhere from $25 to $45. So pretty reasonable. And then actually there's a couple different tools that you can use to do this right in the car. This is the one that I chose. There's another one by AGA. Both of them work pretty well. The tool isn't exactly cheap, but it is well worth it. So it's from having to pull the cylinder heads, at least I've got a lot of stuff over in the car already. But uh, big thing you're going to get is those little feet that actually allow you to compress the valve springs. Some brushes that'll allow you to plug up the uh, oil return holes, and some brackets that'll mount on there, make it possible for you to compress the springs. So the method that I prefer for this, there is a way to do it with compressed air. Um, you're doing a leak down tester and you can pressurize this piston. That's great. A lot of people do it. No problem. The method that I prefer is actually the rope method. And this has been around for a long time. But uh, seen a couple videos out there where people were bringing it back. And something that I always like to do anyways. I like the safety of being able to leave the rope in there not have an air compressor hooked up to it and worrying about a valve falling or maybe not being on top dead center although the kit's pretty foolproof so basically it's just a 3 8 inch nylon rope put it down inside the spark plug hole i found it easier to cut it and then singe the end of it so you don't have any frayed edges it goes in there in one solid piece and you can see the coils in the rope the way it's woven together while you're putting it in just turn it and you can't turn it too much is kind of my opinion as it's feeding in there it's going to coil inside the cylinder and then you can actually compress the cylinder by turning the crank it's a 27 millimeter nut that goes on there clockwise to the, raise the cylinder counterclockwise to lower it and then you do have to lower it a little bit and every now and then in order to do this and i'm going to make a couple short video clips so this doesn't run on too long but while I've got the engine out, it makes it nice and easy to see everything. And I saved one of the last valve springs to do because it gives you a nice, good, clean view of what I'm going to be doing. So I'll be back in a couple minutes with uh, another little clip for this. So continuing on, threaded my rope all the way down inside that cylinder. Again, turning it with the weaving so the coils. Nothing comes, the threading doesn't come apart. So then what I did was I moved it out to the front of the engine, used my ratchet, turned clockwise to raise that cylinder into position, and it snugs the soft rope up against the bottom of the valves. And you'll actually feel the resistance. You won't be able to turn that ratchet any further. It doesn't take a lot of force. It is a really soft rope. So I just go until I feel the resistance. And then, good sanity check, grab the rope, give it a pull, can't pull it out. So, what that allows it to do is now I can use my tool. You can see I have it hooked up here. It goes right onto the engine parts there. There's little brackets. We have our movable part here. You can see the kit comes with a shorter compressor and a longer compressor or the valves on the bottom, valves up on top, intake and exhaust or exhaust and intake and it comes with those little crow's feet. Now it comes with three different ones they're labeled L, R and S and along with the kit like everybody else has shown you get this little piece of paper. I've seen a few videos where people say that they find that the, the paper isn't always the right recommended one it works better with than others 
Um, honestly, it, everything's worked just fine for me, so I don't know. Maybe maybe something does work a little bit better for them, but everything's worked pretty well for me. So we're going to go ahead, put our crow's foot right on top of the spring. We're going to compress it. So get a 17 millimeter ratchet. Get a 8 millimeter wrench, and you're going to be able to hold your 8 millimeter, turn your 17 millimeter, and compress that spring. And then once you get it all down, we'll take another video clip and show you guys what happens next. Okay, so I went ahead and I actually rotated my 17 millimeter wrench counterclockwise while holding the 8 millimeter in place. And what that did was it actually compressed the spring. You guys can see down there. You can see it's kind of separated. So here's the top of my rocker. Here's my keepers, a couple little metal clips that go on the end of the valve stem. Those just come off with a magnet. I have the top of the spring assembly itself, and my crow's foot. So kind of a good sanity check at this point. If you're really still nervous about the whole rope method, is try pushing that valve down. You can push on it pretty hard. If the rope is in place doing its job, it's not going to go anywhere. And even if the rope wasn't in place, remember you still got the keepers on there. You haven't taken them off. So the worst case that's going to happen is the valve is going to push down and those keepers are going to reconnect with the top of the spring assembly and it's not going to go anywhere. So that's one of the reasons I really like this method as opposed to the air method. You can actually do this little sanity check. It's a slow and methodical. Make sure you don't... Uh, drop anything. So I'm sure my valve is in place. I'm sure my piston's in place. I have my rocker arm there. I gotta get that out. So what I'm gonna do is turn my ratchet counterclockwise. It is going to drop the piston. And when I drop the piston, then I can come in and I can push down on that rocker arm tip. It'll go down. Remember, those keepers are still in place, so no need to panic. When it goes down, I'm gonna lift that rocker arm out of the way. Then I'm going to go ahead and use my ratchet to bring the piston back up, turning it clockwise, bringing the piston up. When that happens, that valve is going to come back up without the rocker arm there. And then I can recompress the spring so that the keepers are exposed and I can get those keepers out of there. So I'll show you that in just a minute. Right now I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the next step and get that rocker arm out of there. Okay, so if you see, rocker arm is no longer in place. Seen videos where people take them out. People were, some videos where people just kick them out to the side. All I did was I actually used a little hook, went down there, just moved it off to the side, no problem. You can see my valve spring is now still compressed. I still have the keepers in there, so everything is nice and safe. Now I can go in and I can bring my piston back up to top dead center or close to it. So I'm going to bring it up, I'm going to turn that ratchet clockwise, bring that back up. That should extend that valve all the way up there. That can, I'm going to have to um, release the tension on the spring compressor obviously in order to let it come back up. But that will bring it up, then I can recompress it, the keepers should be visible and I can get those off there. Okay. So continuing on, I went ahead and I turned my ratchet. On the front crank, I brought my piston up, so the rope is nice and tight in there. Actually, seating against the bottom of the valves. I gave it a little bit of a pull on the rope, nothing happened. Now you can see, when I compressed the spring again, used that 17 millimeter wrench, turned it counterclockwise. Now you can actually see the end of the valve with the rocker out of the way. You can see the two little metal clips, they call them keepers. And just a couple little... Uh, half circles and they're tapered so when you put them back in you want the thicker edge pointing out back at you so as it uh, as the valve presses against it it kind of clamps onto the end doesn't allow it to go anywhere so you can see the valve is or the spring is compressed keepers are visible and the main reason I wanted to do this even though there's so many videos out here showing it is the reason I like this method is right there is the end of the valve stem and if you do it right brought the piston up, the rope is there, the keepers are still on, 
you can push down on it and it doesn't go anywhere. If it bounces a little, you know, there's a little bit of a little bit of a push on it that's okay, is just seating against the rope, but usually they don't even go anywhere. You can see that one doesn't. So keepers are still on, I can push on it, I don't worry about dropping the valve, I know I'm safe to remove those keepers. So now I can take my little magnet. One of them came off already just with the screwdriver touching it. The other one, just use a magnet, go in there, grab it. And now I can release the tension on my spring compressor, take the spring off, replace my valve stem seal. So you see right there, there's a little keeper. Thicker on one side than on the other. The thicker side, when you put it back on, faces out towards you. So all spring tension has been released. I've got my tool over there, just slid right out. I've got the actual bar, it just retracts, goes through that hole, so it moves out of the way. You can actually get yourself some more space. So now I have my spring assembly. So I can pull that out, put it right down there so we don't lose anything. Got the rocker arm that's still in there. And then you'll notice right down there, a the little brush. You see off to the side, there's that other little keeper. So brushes were an excellent idea in these kits. I can't recommend them enough. It's just one less thing that can possibly go down into the engine. So I'm use my magnet, I'll get that out of there. But every single hole leading down into the engine, I've plugged. And even when there wasn't a brush, Got a couple little things plugging that little hole right on the end there too. So go ahead and get that out and we'll move on to replacing the stem seal, which you can see right there. Like so many other videos, I just got a set of hose pliers here. Now the ones in my car really needed to be done. Just a gentle force, moving it back and forth. And it comes right up. I don't know if they're all supposed to be that easy or if mine are just extremely warm, but every one that I've done, and I'm just about done with this project, has slid off there pretty easily. So I'll be back in just a minute. All right. So went ahead, put a little bit of lithium grease, white lithium grease on the inside of the new stem seal, and went ahead and put it on there. I have the engine out of the car, so kind of makes it easy for me to get my hand in there and you know, slip that on. Then I actually use those same pliers and just very gently, not squeezing it, but just using it almost like a like a press, just basically put it on the, on the bottom of the stem seal and then rotated it gently and pushed it down there. Nothing that's actually going to cause the teeth to gouge in there. And then you can see just make sure that the stem seal is seated all the way down. A great level of comfort knowing that that rope is there and uh, the valve's not going to go anywhere no matter how hard I push on it. So also allows you to take breaks or spread this out over a little bit of time. So a little bit of white lithium grease and then we'll go ahead and get that spring assembly back on there and get the keepers on there and rocker arm. <laughs> 